Hey, hardworking man here. Just getting back from a six hour road trip. You guys saw recently, I had the Wolf Ridge Pro 20AC in the wood yard. That was a buddy splitter. Well, I just picked up a Timberwolf log splitter, the hydraulic cylinder. I'm gonna throw that on Big Blue to speed it up a little bit while I wait for my new splitter to show up. I'm still not gonna say what it is until I get it and I reveal it on the channel. So if you guys wanna see that, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon and keep an eye out. I think you're gonna like it. It's gonna be a huge improvement over what I have. But for the time being, I'm gonna throw this Timberwolf Ram onto Big Blue. It was on Facebook Marketplace. A guy that was splitting a lot of really big wood went to a higher diameter cylinder with a lower inner shaft and he took this one off with a less than 200 hours on it. I don't split a lot of huge knotty wood. It's mostly pretty clean. So I'm gonna throw that on and it should be a lot faster than the Ram that I have on there right now. During this road trip, something that just drives me crazy. Two things, the two main things, my pet peeves when I'm driving. If you see somebody with a big heavy loaded trailer and they leave a little bit of space in front of them, don't pull into that space. I don't have a trailer today, but I have that happen all too often. Somebody jams right in on you. You need that space to stop. You're not gonna stop as fast as a vehicle that's rolling empty or doesn't have a big trailer on it. I always leave extra space. I actually totaled the truck before because I had space. The car next to me did not leave space. There was a traffic jam and they were gonna rear end the car in front of them. So instead of rear ending the car in front of them because they didn't leave enough space to stop their car, they shot over into the safety space that I had left to be able to stop my trailer. So I wasn't gonna be able to stop. I was either gonna smash that little car not knowing who's in it, or I was gonna get over to the shoulder and try to miss everybody but I was unsuccessful and I ended up getting down in the ditch and totaling my truck out. So don't pull out in front of big trucks and trailers. Don't take that space they're leaving. It's there for a reason. The other thing that drove me crazy today and when I drive, especially through Detroit and higher populated areas, is people just cruising out on a nice slow stroll in that left lane on the expressway. If you wanna drive and take your time getting to wherever it is you're going, stay in that right lane, that's what it's for. The left lane, that's for people that got places to go. That's for people with ticket money. If you don't have ticket money, stay out of that far left lane. It's not for you. The right lane, that's your lane. If there's three lanes, you can use the middle lane if you wanna go a couple miles an hour over the speed limit. But that far left lane, leave that one for the people with ticket money getting jammed up if you look in your rear view mirror and you got 20 cars behind you you're in the wrong lane that just drives me crazy i'm not a super speedy driver but when i got places to go and i got a busy schedule sometimes i might push the limits a little bit and people just cruising in that lane they drive me crazy so don't be that guy don't be the guy in the left lane out on a sunday stroll stay out of that lane that's it sorry about the rant I'm not a big fan of driving, especially in big cities like Detroit. It's chaos down there. And then you got the people that are going five under in the far left lane. I don't get it. What are you over there for? Stay out of that lane. All right, here we are with Big Blue. I'm gonna try a couple things to see if I can speed it up a little bit. My new splitter is a couple weeks out, but I already got the stuff and I wanna see what differences this makes. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get Blue warmed up. I'm gonna run a cycle down and back in time it, see how long it takes. And then when I was looking at this thing a little closer and learning a little more about hydraulics, I noticed he's got all these ports choked way down to smaller lines. So what I'm gonna do is the first thing is this return line, it's a half inch. I'm gonna put this three quarter inch return line in and I'm gonna see how much time that saves, if any. And then the next thing I'm going to do, which I know will make it faster, is replace that cylinder with the Timberwolf cylinder that I got. And then again, this is for the four way adjustable wedge. So that's fine that it's choked down. But here he's got these lines choked down coming out of the valve out of the control. So I'm gonna put bigger lines that Timberwolf has one inch ports. So there's a hydraulic line shop in town. I'm gonna see if they can make me a line that will fit the Timberwolf cylinder 
and then fit into here that looks like maybe a half inch port so and see how that does so let's get blue warmed up and get a how it sits cycle time all right blue's warmed up let's see what this cycle time is how she sit So I got this return line replaced. It was a half inch. I went to three quarter. I had some new lines made up to put the Timberwolf cylinder on. So this part will go into the cylinder, this part into my controls. Instead of going to the local farm store and buying lines and adapters and everything, I just went to a hydraulic store, a fluid supply store, and had them build these lines for me. So let's get this old cylinder removed, get the old lines removed, bring the Timberwolf cylinder out, try to get that thing pieced in. I'm gonna to have to move my mounting block here, so I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna get it back where it needs to go, get it tacked in, and then I'm gonna take it and get it welded on correctly because I by no means am a welder and something with that much pressure on it, I don't wanna have my welds trying to hold up to that. So let's get these old lines off, get the old cylinder off, and get that new cylinder out here. All right, we've got the old cylinder removed from the push plate. Now we'll just get the hydraulic lines removed from the control here, and then we'll get the new cylinder brought out and set into place, get it hooked up, make sure it's gonna work correctly, and then the next step would be to remove that old mounting block from the back so we can get them repositioned for the new, new ram. Unhook the lines from the elbows first so that way we can just spin the elbows out. This is how the splitter was set up when I bought it. It's like I would have done in the past, just buying different fittings and doing it all myself. It was maybe a little bit more money, I'm not sure, because I didn't price all the fittings, but it's gonna be nice just having the nice clean lines without all the fittings like this. Get an oil catch pan down there to catch this hydraulic fluid I lose. People might be wondering why I'm putting this money and this effort into this log splitter when I have a new one on order. But I, one, just want to see what happens, how much I can improve it. And two, it'll be faster until my new one gets here. And three, it'll help it sell better when I go to sell it once my new one arrives. Clean up around the base here so I don't get junk into my hydraulic system. I plan on taking this old cylinder. I have a spare control and then I have a old splitting wedge off from a Husky 35 ton. I'll put all that together as a package and sell it to get a little bit of money back for that stuff. I know they make plugs for these hydraulic lines. Usually when I pull them off like this, I'll just take the gloves I'm wearing when I'm done working and turn them inside out over it to keep it from getting all gummed up and dirty inside.
right, I'm just gonna go grab a zip tie, zip tie these lines on so they're not flopping all over. We'll get this old slow cylinder removed. All right, so when I bought this splitter, it had a dump truck ram on it that went from the back there all the way to the front. It was a massive ram. It started leaking pretty bad. Like I said, I don't know a ton about hydraulics, so I wasn't prepared to rebuild it or anything. I could have probably taken it in and got it rebuilt, but it was also super slow. With my limited knowledge and failed failure to do the proper research, I bought this ram, this cylinder, thinking it would be a lot faster because it was way bigger with a way smaller inside rod. I didn't know much about log splitters then, but that was more power, no speed, as you've seen. So we're gonna replace this with a smaller outer cylinder with a larger inside diameter rod. Like I said, this one will get sold with the other wedge and with another controller for someone who wants to build their own unit. Had I done my research in the first place, I could have done this right the first time, but you live and you learn. All right, here we go. Big blue 2.0 putting the new Timberwolf cylinder on it. If this works out, maybe I'll paint the whole thing and we'll turn it into big red instead of big blue. I'm gonna have to do some modifications for this ram to fit up here correctly. Shouldn't be too bad though. This is a 30 inch stroke instead of a 24 inch stroke and it's a different hookup system which is why i'm going to have to take that block off and move it back so let's get the lines hooked up first and see what we can do get this cylinder secured so it doesn't roll off if i'm not paying attention To get these plugs out, they were in pretty tight, and I didn't have, it's a giant Allen wrench key. I did not have one, but I did have an old socket that was for some locking wheel nuts, lug nuts, and that was the right size to go on here. So I took an old 13 millimeter socket, and I welded those two pieces together, so I was able to remove these plugs. Here's that beautiful job I was talking about. I got the job done. Like I said, I'm no welder but I can do little projects like this. To get these lines built, I just went to a hydraulic shop and I brought one of these plugs in so they knew what size adapter to put on that end. And then they had a controller in there which was the same size so they knew what to put on the other end. All right, I'll go get a little bit of thread tape, get these hooked to the controller, get them hooked to the cylinder and see what we got. I'm gonna get this all attached. I'm gonna crack this open so I can bleed it out. I'm not sure if that's the correct procedure, but that's what we're gonna go with. All right, everything should be on and tight except for this is loose and that's loose. I'm gonna try to bleed it a little bit. Let's get the Honda fired up and see what happens.
like I said, this ain't my thing. But it looks like we got the air out. Got the new cylinder installed bled out not sure it's done correctly it's the only thing i know how to do made a little bit of a mess got that cleaned up picked up the tools i've got this thing just temporarily safety wired to that rear mounting block so it won't fall off another piece of rope there with a little cam strap to hold it down i put a stick under it to hold it up so that it doesn't hit the first edge of the push plate i've got the fluid all warmed up so let's fire this thing up get some rpms on the honda and see how fast this goes compared to that old cylinder i think i'm gonna like it tell already that's going to be a huge improvement i still have some work to do i got to remove the old mounting block get the two new mounting blocks hooked up then get the new timberwolf ram fixed to the push plate and we'll see how much wood this thing can split i think we're not going to have any issues with any of the timber i run into i'm still going to have plenty of power and way more speed is it a brand new commercial splitter absolutely not but is now but now it's something that's actually viable before without stacking in the four-way wedge i would get beat by a convenience store splitter by a champion or a husky or whatever i don't think that's going to be the case anymore with this new cylinder all right that phase of the big blue retool is done we've got the timberwolf cylinder installed we've got it plumbed in new return line that's larger this ram is much faster than the one i replaced I've got it hooked in here with a one and a quarter inch pin. I'm going to get it the correct size bolt if I can. And then I had to put some shims in to make the ram press on the plate instead of the pin. So the pin will just be used to retract it. Before I just had a small bolt in the old ram and that was plenty. So that inch and a quarter pin is going to be just fine. Now I've just got to get the rear mounting plate unbolted and unwelded they're my weld so i don't think it's going to be that big of an issue i have four grade eight bolts in there i could do that when i move it back i've got another one of those mounting plates because as you can see the timberwolf cylinder will be mounted on both sides instead of just one central pivot it'll make it stronger more stable but drilling those four holes took a long time and several drill bits this is thick steel not sure what kind it is but it's not cheap because it was no fun to drill. All right, we've got the bolts out of the old blocker plate. This would have been easier to do without the cylinder there, and I could remove the cylinder, but I'm gonna try to get it taken out without the with the cylinder there. I wanted to make sure the cylinder was gonna work, that everything was gonna be good before I remove the old blocker plate. So I'm gonna try to grind my welds a little bit and see if I can pop this thing off. Now we just got to get that cleaned up 
We'll figure out where it needs to be mounted. Hopefully this isn't in the way. I think it's gonna be real close. It just has a six inch longer stroke. And we'll get these cleaned up, put, put into position, tack down, and then get them welded on by a welder. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is unhook this return line to the tank. The tank was always just held into this bracket that was built for it by a ratchet strap, which I took off. And then on the other side, where the hydraulic filter is, they put a on-off valve. So I'm gonna turn that valve off, unhook the return line, and I'll be able to remove this tank, which will allow us to rework this mounting bracket and allow us to get those new mounting stops for the cylinder installed correctly. All right, let's get this mounting plate cut off. I think I'm gonna have it remounted down to here as opposed to, to the main beam. I'm not sure why they did that in the first place, but we'll get it taken off, hopefully. All right, a little bit of grounding and banging with the hammer. We got that bracket out of the way. Now we can get this beam cleaned up, get the two new back braces in position, get that cleaned up so we can tack it down, then get it into a weld shop to get it finished off. All right, we got the splitter all put together so we can run it. I've got it temporarily installed with four grade eight bolts. I'm still gonna take it and get it welded, and then I'll probably get it all painted up so it looks better again, instead of having red and blue, maybe go all red. But let's see how much time we gained. How fast did we make Big Blue? I changed some of the hydraulic lines. They had a bunch of them choked down to half inch. I got three quarter inch return line. I've got new lines made for the cylinder that screw right into the cylinder and then straight over to the controls and the new Timberwolf cylinder on Big Blue. So we were at 23, a little over 23 second cycle time. When I changed that hose, the return line that they had choked down to a half inch, I got it down into the 21 seconds, so we gained like two seconds, a little over two seconds. But how much did we gain with the cylinder? This is going to be our biggest gain by far, so let's see what we got. there it is big blue with the new lines and the new timberwolf cylinder put on it definitely a lot faster we'll see how the times stack up that's a wrap for this episode of hard working man made blue a whole lot faster i thought about changing the hydraulic pump but changing the cylinder was definitely the right move thanks for watching guys the next video is going to be one throwback video running blue with the old cylinder rachel and i splitting up the truckload of wood i cut in the last video and a new machine for the wood yard thanks for watching